Um, you, if you are ready, you can go ahead and put your reed in the water. Um, the 12 inch pieces just need to be, you know, wet enough to um, bend gently. And there we go, bend gently. Let me just make sure we're going over here. There we go, all right. Just make sure we're good in there. Hello, Miss Judy. Hello, how are you? I am good, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. It was hot today. It ended up being much hotter than I expected. We, um, well, I'll tell you it, guys, in just a second. So let me officially get going. Um, thank you for joining. It's Monday Night Meetup. I'm Laura Lee Roberts from Offerings of Wonder by Laura Lee. And tonight I am going to show you, actually, let me make this bigger for a moment. Um, spotlight, there we go. Okay, so we're going to be making this little basket with 12 spokes, so six and six, and we're going to keep the spokes um, two together to make the spokes. So that's, this is what I'm going to show you. And I also just wanted to tell you, so here is, size wise, here's a little smaller one. This one was done with, I think, uh, number two spokes and, or maybe number three spokes and number two um, weavers. And this one was um, three and three. So you can just see from a, a size difference, right? And what was the teal? Was that two and? So this one is six and six what's oh oh i see what you're saying okay yeah Here, six six this way so we have 12 spokes okay. this one only has six spokes and it's oh, three okay. And three. okay okay yeah if it's we're going along you have any questions just follow them up all right so i think we are good to go i am going to make the table view there we go so everybody can see um these are my new towels oops so everybody who got a may subscription box got one of the towels so cute little good lap lap towels all right so i this is a great thing to do with scraps so you know this one i did i had some teal um I had some teal left over. This one I had some pink. You can do them all in natural. You could do them all colored. Um, I'll show you a, a rim when we get after we do this one. Um, this one I had some variegated, um, variegated number two, and so I just did some natural spokes and put the variegated on it, so you can see the the you can do a lot of different things with them i guess that's what i'm trying to say all right so put your spokes and your weavers in the water get everything wet i'm gonna get my weaver out here i've got my water over to the side of me so you guys aren't seeing that Let's see okay all right, so I've just got a bunch of colors here. <laughs> so I've got, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick six. And I am going to just get them so that they're flat. And then I'm gonna take the other six. All right, so these are um, about 12 inches. Um, I had you do 12 inches because I wanted to show you um, one of the borders. Um, one of the borders, you don't need them as long. So if you have even shorter pieces, you can do that. But I wanted to show the little bit bigger one before um, 
where people went small. So um, I just kind of fold it and figure out where the middle is. So again, this is the, the ish part of it. <laughs> so I fold them, figure out where both the middles are, and I'm going to lay them across from each other. Okay, I've got two of each color because I thought it might be easier for demoing. So we're basically just making an X with them crossing in the middle. Okay. All right. Then you're going to take your weaver. And we're going to wrap around three times. I am going to start my weaver on top so that it's lined up with the ones going across. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of a tail there past this. And then I'm going to wrap it right around it so that it's gonna basically be wrapped with that so I can fold it and show you. So I started it on top, wrapped it underneath, and come back up. And so now this is gonna be on top and it catches that tail. It's just a, a easy way to start. If you don't want to start that way, you can just start with the um, tail on top and go around. But we are going to go around all six spokes, keeping them flat three times. So that's one, two, two times around and three times around. And I'm going out, I'm not, I'm not going on Sorry. top. Hey, I'm just gonna say, yeah, can somebody- can um, get the television cut off, whoever it is. Yeah, either put yourself on mute or turn the television oh. down, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So we're going around three times and we are, there we go, we are going out. So we're not stacking on top of each other. So we're going out three times. So we've got two on the top and two on the bottom. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're going a full circle around each one, but then I end up back when I Oh, I see. Yep. You're doing like God's eye, aren't you? Um, well, it's it's you're going to be three times doing exactly the same thing. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to just stop there for a moment. Let me just ask, um, Joan, are you weaving with us tonight? Yep, you are. All right. Judy, are you weaving with us? I am, but I, I'm um, I missed the part where you anchored your uh, starting spoke. OK, that's all right. Let me show you again. Let me get the other end. So I started, well, let me show. I started so that it was lined up with the ones on top. Oh, okay. And then wrapped it around and then caught okay. it. Tail. Got it. Okay. Yep, got it. Okay, good question. All right. Um, Joe, are you even with us tonight? Yes. I'm doing mine backwards. <laughs> That's that's okay. Is anybody left-handed? No. All right. And then, oh, Doreen said it's 99. Whew. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to just pause there and let everybody get the wraps around three times. And then, Doreen, are you weaving with us tonight? Go ahead and just put it in the chat for me. All right. 
All right. And if you're joining us over on Facebook, make sure you say hi. Or if you're watching the replay, say hi. And again, if anybody has questions, go ahead and ask. If you're over on Facebook, go ahead and type them in. And I will try to keep an eye on those two. Turn it over one more time for me. Let's start. So it's wrapped around. Okay. Yeah, let me get up nice and close. So that's the first wrap. So you just wrap it around. You. Yep. So lay it on top. Okay. Got that. I'm going to pretend that this, and then you just wrap it around. So it's basically, you've got like one on top and one underneath to start. Top one underneath. Okay. Okay. Just gonna let you guys do that. Just give me a heads up when you guys are to that point. Uh, all right, so welcome, Kim. Kim's over on Facebook. You can watch. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, so Doreen's just watching tonight. So I've got the three J's tonight, Joan, Judy, and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys just let me know when you are to this point. I'm to that point. Okay. It's not as snug oh. as yours, but that's okay. <laughs> well, the idea tonight is just to learn the technique and then you can play with it. Um, I, a lot of times I just keep the scraps and I can sit and watch TV and do this because I've just done so many of them. Um, so after a while you'll see, and you can have different shapes. So let me just, let me talk about that while you guys are getting, getting there. So this one, let's see. It's the best angle to see that. Um, this one, I did the bottom flat and then I came straight up. So it's kind of a, you know, straight, straight up. This one, I let kind of flare out. And then when I got towards the top, I straightened it up. So it's a little bit wider. Um, and um, a little bit wider than coming like this one, even though this one's smaller, straight up. And then this one is the same as the teal, but I let it come out um, even more. wider. So you can, you can, let me see here. See, I can put this one inside it. <laughs> so um, this is a fun thing to kind of just play with shaping as well. So. All right, so I heard one we got here. I need two more, and then we'll go on. I'm good. You're good? All right. And Joe? Yes. Ready. Yes. And yeah, I'm Joe, ready. Joe. Okay. All right. So once you've gone around three times, now we're 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 back to um where we started and so I know that because I, I see in my line where I started, but also if you turn it over, you've got three wraps there, three wraps there, three wraps here, three wraps here. So now we're going to start splitting. And I did this one on purpose with the different colors. So you hopefully can see that we're going to split into two. So we're going to take two of the spokes and we're going to go over and under treating two spokes together as one, okay? Does that make sense? We're gonna go around yeah. doing this on all four sides one time. So pull them apart, really pull them apart. We wanna be the boss of our basket. We're, we're, we wanna <laughs> spread them out like a sunburst. So you can literally just give them a pull. 
give them a pull. All right. And then oh, the last side here, give them a pull, give them a pull. All right. So now I'm back to where I started, but I don't want to do the same thing I did as I from the start and having them be um, following each other because they won't weave. So that's why you need your second weaver. All right. And so once you get once around, splitting them in twos, then we're going to add our second weaver. And I'm just going to lay it in between the last one that I wove here and the first one here. This is where we started splitting the twos. nice and close and we're gonna chase weave and by doing this we can chase weave basically we're gonna do a continuous weave with an even number of spokes so this is a way and this is true on any basket when you have an even number of spokes and you want to do a continuous weave you can do it by chase weaving. So we started with one, we went all the way around, and now we're going to add the second one, and it's going to chase around the one that we just did. So just give me a thumbs up if that is good, or Joe, just give me a holler there. So is, is the new one behind the last stack yep the the new one is going to okay. go between the first one and the last one and i'm just going to tuck it and leave the tail that's going to be the inside of your basket okay Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. All right, Judy. So I'm just holding on to the right now. Just hold on to it for a moment and then we're we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going. I just want to make sure everybody's got yeah. inserting it in. Judy, are you good? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Joe. Yep. Okay. So, so now we're gonna take this one and again we're gonna continue just you know helping them to spread out. Whoops. <laughs> So now we should be weaving opposite of what we did before. Let me just show you the start there. Okay, so it should be opposite. So the old one is just sort of sitting up. We just leave that there for a minute. We're gonna work with the new one till we get around to the old one. And then we're gonna drop okay. the new one and we're gonna pick the old one and we're gonna keep chasing each other around. Okay. okay. Good here. All right. I'm going to go around. Getting there. All right. I go around. Again, spread everybody out. You want it to look like a nice sunburst. Oops. You can see I'm really telling them, you remember, you're the boss of your basket. <laughs> all right, so I'm getting all the way around. Let's go there. All right, so now I'm back to, here's, here's the one that I dropped. Oh, nice and close. Here's the one that I dropped. This is the one I was just weaving with. So I've caught up to where it was. See that? So I'm gonna pause there till everybody gets to that spot.
So chase weaving is fun because um, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to stop. You can just kind of keep on going. So when you get back to the spot, you're going to be, um, when you get back to your new weaver is right in the space before your old weaver, you're going to let that new one drop and you're gonna pick up the first one and continue weaving. If I didn't do that, if I kept going with the one I was weaving with, let me just do that so you can see. You would see then I would end up with two going over. So we don't want that. We wanna just be over under all the way around. So I can pick up that old one and start weaving now. And it is going to be over and under opposite of the row before. Judy, you look confused. Oh, no, I'm just sitting waiting on you. I've got oh, two okay. rows in. Okay. So we're going to keep going around, and this is a little bit where you guys can decide. On this one, I started coming up pretty quickly. On this one, I um, let it go flat a little bit longer. So this is kind of a where you get to make your call. But when you're ready to start bending up, so um, we're looking at the bottom of our basket right now. So when you're ready to start bending up, we're gonna keep doing this continuous weave around, chasing one, then chasing the other around. And when you're ready to start coming up, just try to get this bent a little bit. You're gonna um, do it so you guys can see. I'm gonna turn it this way. Here's my bottom. We've been weaving like this. I'm gonna flip it a little bit for the camera. You're just gonna start bending your spokes as you weave. So giving them a gentle bend. So this is, we're gonna talk about shaping. Everybody's right-handed. So in this case, our right hand is our weaver hand. Our left hand is what shapes your basket. So I'm using my left hand and I am pushing the spokes up. I want these to come up. If you want it to be a little flatter, then you would like, you would push just a little bit, right? If you want it to come up, you're gonna push so that it's standing straight up. You're basically gonna put your spokes where you want them to be. So just using your left hand to shape and your right hand to weave. And when you catch up, catch up to the weaver that before you drop the one that you were using and pick up the next one. So shaping with their left hand, we're really just putting it up. What's fun about these is that you can you can keep them really flat with just coming up the sides a little bit. Um, you can make them come straight up if you want. Um, you can give them a little, um, like this one was kind of a, a gentle slope going up. Again, when you catch up to your previous weaver, you drop the one that you were weaving with and pick up the old one. So this is my time to remind you, if your weavers are starting to dry out, grab some water or some spray, get them wet. <clears throat> this is also, I like to talk about, let's say you didn't have seven foot pieces. I think, I think that's what I said for these seven foot. You don't have seven foot. 
you can use up your scraps, whatever you have, and just add on a color or add on a piece, even if it's the same color, um, just by, let me, um, let me just do that so I can show you. All right. All right, so I just cut this piece, okay? To add on um, for these vests, especially, I don't try to tuck them down in. I don't, I just lay my new piece. Let me show, okay, let me see. Here's my old piece. I just lay the new piece right on top of it. I've got my new piece tail over here my old piece tail here. I kind of put my finger on it. Oh, I should have cut the other one. Let me, let me get ahead here for a second. Okay, and then just start weaving. And then after we're done, if the tails are too big, you can trim them, trim them up. So that's why these are really fun to do with um, with scraps. Do we need uh, to uh, leave a certain amount of our colored breed? Uh, we need to stop when it's a certain length so we've got enough to do the rim. So, yeah, so I'm going to show you a couple different things. So, this rim took about four inches. Okay, oh, I like that. So I'll, sh I'll show you that, I'll show you that on this one. Um, this one, I'm trying to guess. I'm gonna guess this one took about three inches. One, two, yeah, about three inches. Um, but I'm gonna also show you um, actually I might take that. So let me, let me just keep weaving for a little bit. I'm going to show you a very simple, um, where you don't need much at all. So I had you guys cut 12 inch spokes, um, just cause I wanted to make a little bit bigger one and to be able to, um, show you guys the process, but you, you can make shorter ones. Let's say I don't know, this one was probably uh, a tip measure here. Let's see, four. So this one was probably about seven inches spokes for the, for the tiny, tiny one. But you just keep going around, going around, chasing each other, shaping with your left hand. So I'm going to, uh, my only, my, uh, probably my tip for this is every once in a while, stop, look at it from the top, you know, look down and see, are you, are you even on all sides? And then look at it from kind of the, the side view as well. Um, and make sure, you know, things are looking even. That's really what we're looking for. And it doesn't, you don't have to use colored reed. So I'm like for the spoke. So this one I did with natural. I wanted to show you a couple of different things. Um, use what you have. Doesn't have to be the same color. Um, um, I did this one um, with what, what, six different colors. Um, more so so I could show you the splits. I think it's easier to see the different colors when we uh, split into twos. Um, so, but, you know, they could all be different colors. They can, like, they will be beautiful regardless, just because they're, they're just, they're just fun little things. All right, so, if you want to do this one, you want to get it to, we have about four inches. So for, for this room, sorry, that got shadowed there. And then let me 
grab something here. My friend Hobie makes a lot of these little baskets. He actually taught a class at one point. I'm going to show you this one. So oh, I love it. Isn't it cute? So yeah. that was, he gave me one time. So I wanted to, I wanted to show that. So this one was done with four weavers, two and two going across. And then um, he added a, a little handle. So he actually took his weaver and brought it up and over, wrapped it around, brought it, twisted it and tucked it back in for a little handle. So if you don't have a lot of spoke left, can you see this one? It's just, this was a spoke. He just bent it down. Oh, sure. Yeah. And tucked it in the next one. Trying to get a good picture there. Can you see that? So if you don't have a lot of spoke, you can just, and this just gives it a little, a little edge. And it's literally just tucked down into the next one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my dog. She's whining because my husband just came home and she saw the car pull up. <laughs> She's like, let me out to go visit with him. <laughs> You might come get you, baby girl. You're stuck with me for a little while. <laughs> yeah, whoever whoever leaves and comes home, then you know the other person becomes chopped liver. Yeah. <laughs> like I haven't seen that person in a while. All right. I'm gonna do, I don't know. I'm gonna do one more round here. And then I'm gonna show you flat ram. Okay. All right, so I know this one I didn't make very deep, but I, I want to show you um, that even if you don't have a lot of stuff, you can still do some fun things. So, uh, okay, I have more than four inches. All right, let me go around a couple more. Who's done weaving? Let me know. Are you guys still going? Yep, I'm still going. You're still going. I'll keep going until you guys tell me you're ready. Judy, you are fast weaver. You're probably ready. No, actually, I'm twining. Oh, I'm, I'm not following instructions. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I don't do chase much. Ah, okay. Well, well. That's awesome. You're doing twining. Then you can show what it looks, what twining looks like on it. You can twine, no reason you can't. That's another thing you can do on an even number of spokes. And with this, um, I don't know if you're doing a step up, Judy, but you really don't need to do a step up on this. I, did, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Does the weavers just get cut off? Yes. I'm doing my last row then. All right. Yeah, and I said about seven feet gives you a nice, nice little size <laughs> for a basket. Um, so, and you can see as you start, you know, going on these, it's just kind of very methodical and you don't have to think a whole lot you just let your fingers go and um they're just fun to do and no two have to look alike i will tell you guys i when i do shows i don't do a lot of shows but when i do do shows i always have some of these little baskets they go like hot cakes they just people like little baskets all right, so let's see. Oops. 
All right, one more time around with this one. Finish that one off. I like the multicolor, they're kind of fun. <laughs> All right. So when you get to the end, or you're ready to stop, <laughs> end of your weaver, or you're ready to stop, um, I just trim off that light is just, there we go. I just trim off the tails and just leave them inside the basket because when we do the rim, it's gonna, it's gonna cap, uh, catch those and keep them from going anywhere. So it's a good time. Um, you can set it down if it's not laying, if it's not sitting flat, if it's like rolly. You can um, sweat it a little bit. You know, you can use your thumbs to flatten it out a little bit if you need to. All right. So I'm a, while I'm waiting, I'm going to take and put my basket in the water, um, my spokes that are sticking out. So not what's already woven, but just the spokes. I'm going to just stick those in the water and make sure that they're going to be wet and nice and flexible. And I'm going to show you, I will show you two ways to finish these off. Well, three ways. We talked about just tucking them in. All right. So that's if you don't have a lot of, especially if you don't have a lot of spoke. Um, So let's see, this was a spoke and he just tucked it in and you can go left or right, it doesn't matter, but you're just, you wanna go in the same direction. Um, you just take your spoke and you tuck it over into the space uh, next to your spoke to the right or to the left, whichever way you wanna go. And if you do wanna put a handle on it, uh, you can either leave one of your weavers long, like, you know, don't, like, don't weave a row, um, or you can add a piece in afterwards and just um, take a piece, fold it in half and put it through one of your spokes. Let's see if I can get up really close there. There we go. So this is the handle. He's got like a loop right here sideways there we go you can see it's just like looped around so both pieces are coming up through here and the way he did that he started on one side he did it with the weaver but you could do this either way you start on one side figure out how high you want your handle come down loop it around one of your weavers stick it back up and then he just twisted it around that first one and then just tucked it back down on the other side. Very These clever. Baskets that you're gonna be, you know, lifting heavy weights with. <laughs> so I'm sorry, did somebody have a question? No, okay. All right. 
Let's see. Joe, are you ready to put a border on? Yes. Okay. Joan? Yep, I'm ready. All right. So before we do that, we're going to, I just want to see, um, Joan, I'm going to put the spotlight on you first. Can you just? Oh, I can. Yep. Here we go. Oh, I love it. Look how pretty. Yeah. I, like the black yeah. I just need to work a little bit better about keeping it even down here. Once you work up the side, that could keep it nice yep. and snug, but okay. I need some work down here. All right. Let's just practice. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, let's see, Judy, I'm going to do you next. So Judy twined, you guys. So that's a nice look. A little different look, but it looks beautiful. Good job. Mm -hmm. All right. And Joe, let me make you yours. Thank you for coming back on camera. Ah. Oops. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the camera. That's it. That's okay. Your your um, bandwidth looks like it's a. There we go. All right, like that. Is that blue? We have very unstable. Yes, I like that. All right. If you want to go back off camera to save your bandwidth, that's fine. And then um, let me come back here and go there. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to do this one first. This one takes the, well, takes, I'm gonna show you this one and then I'm gonna show you one, a second one uh, on the other basket. All right, this one, this is probably one of my favorite ones to do on here because it's just one step. So a lot of times when you do a rolled border, there's you know the first step, second step, third step, fourth step, depending on what the border is. This one you do all in one step. All right, so you're still gonna treat your um, two spokes together as a single spoke. You're gonna take a spoke, is going to go behind its partner to the right, in front of the next one, and back to the inside. So it's going behind, in front, behind, and then just leave your tails inside. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Then you take the next one. You do the same thing. You're going behind, in front, and behind. And it's, it kind of starts to stack. And that's it, all the way around. So behind, in front, behind. And that's why you need, I said you need about, I think at least, kind of depends how wide you got, but it, at least four inches to do this. And you can see it starts to just give you this nice. I love this one because it's just one and done, right? <laughs> and you just push it down as you're going around. And then where people have trouble with the world border is always the, either the last one or the last couple. So let me get it around to you there. And this is a really nice um, firm border once you know everything's dry. All right. Okay. So let me know when you get back where you just have three spokes standing. Three spokes. Just to so guys get. And isn't it pretty with just the different colors? It is. Yeah. That's why I said, this is a really great thing to use up scraps with. They're just, they're fun and they're easy. And honestly, um, a lot of times what I do is I just, I throw, I keep my round reed scraps in a bag and I just throw them out on the table 
and I cut up some spokes and then I grab some long pieces and I just weave. And if I have to add on, I add on. Sometimes I change colors on the weavers. Sometimes I use natural spokes and use color on the weavers. So you can you can really play a lot of fun with these. So I'm going to hold here till you guys are ready. I'm trying to see if there are any comments over on Facebook. Well, if you guys are commenting, there we go. All right. I'm not. Not seeing any comments show up there, but if you are, that's fine. If you're watching this on the replay and you have questions or ideas or you make it, please share. Please share. Okay. Let me know when you get back to just three standing. Okay. Okay, you're there or okay, let me know. Okay, I'm there. I'm there. Uh, there. I'll th okay. I think everybody's there. Okay. Not there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I don't hold anybody up. Well, okay. So we when we did it, we went over basically we used three spokes to weave over, right? We went over, under, over and behind. No, sorry. Yeah. Behind in front, behind. Whew, thank you. So um, we don't have three to do this one with, right? So the third one's already woven down here. So we just need to pretend that it's standing up. So I'm gonna just put my, I'll just put my all here for a second, right? We need to pretend that it's standing up there. So it's here. So this one, we just we do the behind in front and behind, right? It's gonna tuck basically behind this one if it was standing up. Let me get closer there. There we go, right? So we just lay that one in. That one's pretty easy, right? It's just, it really just is laying behind this one. Our next one, we're gonna go behind. It's going in front of this spoke. Oh, wait, sorry. In front of this spoke, but behind the spoke. So basically it's going to come up and it's going to go in this hole. Okay. So it's behind the one that's standing. It's going to go in front of this first one that was there and it needs to end up behind this one. So it's going to go into the hole right there. All right. Our last one that's standing, it goes behind the next one, which is all tucked in, so right behind. It's got to come in front of this one. So again, we're going to poke it through. Get it poked through here. So it's going behind its neighbor. So here's here's the one we're doing. It's going behind its neighbor, this one. It needs to come in front of this one. So we we went behind and we're bringing it back out. Yeah. And then it goes in front of come one. out. Huh? So it went behind this one. It's in front of this one. And it needs to go behind this one. So we're just going to mm -hmm. tuck it down in so it'll end up behind there. Wait. 
get it partially tucked and then I'll show it again. There we go. So again, this black one, it went behind the blue one, in front of the orange one, and it's gotta be behind the brown one over here. So I'm tucking it in the hole between the orange and the brown. So it's one step all the way around, which again, I love. And when it dries, it's a really nice firm um, rim. And then if any of your tails are too long, like that one's, there you go. These are kind of long. Once it dries, let it dry and then just trim them up a little bit. But let it dry first because round reed does shrink. And if you cut them too short, they will pop back out. And you don't want that. <laughs> I say that from experience. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going around and using my thumb, my, my left thumb here. I'm just kind of going around and pressing everybody in nice and tight. <coughs> I do that on all my rolled rims when I do that to just kind of even it all out. And that's it. Okay. We have one. All right. I'm going to show you another one that is a two-step one. Um, just, just for your... Uh, viewing and enjoyment and if you want to um, try a different room at one point. So this one, I'm gonna take one, we're gonna start the same way, take one, go behind and come back out to the front. We're gonna do that all the way around. So behind one, bring it to the outside. Behind one, bring it to the outside. We're gonna do that all the way around. This one is a two-step rolled rim. So just behind one and out. Behind one and out. Behind one and out. Out, behind one and out. That was good and long enough. Behind one and out. And then when you get to the last one, you still want to do the same thing. You want to go behind the neighbor and out, out. So even though the sky isn't standing up anymore, we're still going behind it. And we're coming to the outside. Okay. All right. So I do that. And then again, I use my thumb and I just go around and push everything down, get it nice and even. Okay. All right, the second step of this is we don't want all these ends on the outside of our basket. We want the ends back on the inside, so we need to tuck them back in. You can do this one of two ways. Um, so it's out, it's already laying over the spoke next to it, right? It's already laying on top of it, and we wanna stick it in, and you have, you have a choice. This rim works both ways, so I'm just I'm going to tell you that. Just be consistent on what you do. You can either tuck it in underneath, so underneath this one, or you can tuck it in on top of it. We still are in this same hole, right, that the spoke that's next to the one like that we're that we're over or this hole, you can go underneath 
the second spoke that's sticking out, or you can go on top. I like to go on top of it. So I pull that next spoke down so I can make a bigger hole. And then I just stick the ends in. There we go, like that. So I take the next one, I pull it down. I make a nice big hole right here. Take these guys and just stick them in. So this is a, um, a two-step ruled border. If you have not done a lot with round reed, there are a gazillion round borders that you can do. I think gazillion's a real number with that. Um, so I'm just showing you two different ways tonight to do it. So we did the one step method where we went behind and front behind. This one is a two step method. We do a basically behind and outside. Oops. You do want to keep them flat. Ah, there we go. And then the second step is taking the ends from the outside and putting them into the space next to it and tucking them in. And it gives us kind of a, um, a braided look. There's my, my weaver came out, so I'm just going to tuck him back in there and get back inside. So that, those are um, just a couple of ways that you can finish them off. And then um, I showed you Hope's basket where he just tucked in the spoke next to the spoke next to its neighbor and just tucked it right down. And that gives you a very um, simple border. But he only had single spokes, right? Well, we did doubles. He did. So this one- um, Oh, had, no, he did doubles. I well, did he do doubles. No, it actually was single. So he did, he did oh. um, this one was um, four spokes, two and two. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. And then he split them into singles. And then he did, like we started, he, he only did two. Like mm -hmm. we started um, here, we did three. Mm -hmm. He only did two on this one. And then he started um, uh, going around. And it was single, single, single. And then the reason it looks like it's double here is because he took the single spoke and Actually, he went to this way. He took the single spoke and tucked it down next to the neighbor. I see, yeah. Clever guy. He is. He's very clever. And a sweetheart. All right, so let me just finish this one up. Um, uh, key thing when you're doing rolled borders is, especially if you're using two together like this, is you want to just make sure that you know you're not twisting them as you're weaving. You want to you know keep everything flat, so you don't want to have them. Um, you don't want to have them twisted. Like let me do. Let me twist this one on purpose. Like you don't want to do that. See that? See these two? They lay this way. You don't want to twist them. All right. Let me get these guys in. Um, one of the reasons I like doing round read is because um, I don't have to scarf and I don't have to lash. <laughs> I can do a rolled border and I'm done. Okay. And then the last one, it's still the same thing. We are. Um, tucking into the neighbor, but because we went in on the top hole instead of underneath, then we just need to make sure we make a space on that one. So we can stick it in there. Yeah. 
Let me get it started and I will show that again. <laughs> Where's that third hand of yours to help you out? I'll tell ya. <laughs> All right, there we go. Ugh. Fingers don't want to work there. There we go. That one started. Get that one started. Come on, go in. There we go. All right. Let me show you. Up nice and close again. So that last one, I just made the hole on. This was the weaver that was we already, or the spoke we already wove was down here. So I made a hole on top and then we're just gonna stick it in and finish. Okay. And then again, at the end of the row, I take my thumb and I just go around and give everybody a little push to snug everything up. And then when it's dry, go in and trim up those ends. So that's three different borders. Just tucking in when you, this is really good when you don't have a lot of spoke left. These two both take um, a good four inches for this size. Now, if you went out wider, if you like, you know, if you decide you wanted to make some wider and you want to do this rim, you'll need more if your spokes are further apart. So the wider it is, the more you'll need to fill that space in between the spokes. And there are all kinds of formulas for this stuff. Um, Flo Hoppy has some amazing books where she shows a lot of rolled rims. And one of the things that's in her books is the math behind it. And I will see if I can find uh, at least these two um, in the book. And then I'll post the, how you do the, how you figure out how much you need. And it has to do with the space between your spokes. You have to know that. And then that, you plug into a formula that tells you how much you need to do the rolled rim. So I'll look and see if those are in the books I have. Um, I just know for most of the ones I need, I need at least four inches to do this rim. And if I go out too wide, like, yeah, actually those are about the same. They're about the same, but they are different shapes. Can you see that this one, uh, this one, it's kind of, it goes, it's like shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it comes out, comes out fat, comes out more here before it turns up. This one went up at an angle more quickly. Um, I use the same amount of read on both of them. So just to kind of show that. And then same thing for this one. This one was all number two. Oh no, this one was, yeah, this one was all number two. This one, the spokes were number three and the weavers were number two. And same on this one, the spokes were number three and the weavers were number two. So general rule of thumb, you can do these with, um, the same. So this is like all number two, the teal as well as the natural. You can do it with all the same um, size of round reed, or you can do it, your spokes um, can be bigger than your weavers. You don't want it the other way around. You don't want your spokes to be smaller than your weavers. Otherwise you'll be having a wonky, wonky basket. <laughs> okay, good to know. Unless, unless you want a wonky basket. Now, I would tell you when I've done scraps, I have done sometimes a mix. Let's say my spokes, some of my spokes might have been number two and some of them might have been number three, but then I always wove with number two. 
So equal mm -hmm. or less than for your weavers of whatever your spokes. Well, that's interesting that you can mix your spokes with both two and three. You mm -hmm. can because it's, it's um, uh, trying to think of the right, right terms to use for it. It's um, as long as your weavers, as long as your weavers aren't bigger than your spokes. Mm -hmm. you so have, when you did that, did you do, when you did your weavers mm -hmm. as a twosome, did you make one number two and one number three, or did you do two twos next to two threes? Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I don't remember, <laughs> I'll be honest. I just, I've made so many of these and I, I really do. Okay. Um, practice. I, practice and just, and just playing with them. Yeah. And even if they're not perfect, like that one's not sitting, um, you can get it wet and then flatten them out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just give my, that a little, a little sit better. It's kind of lopsided. There, that's better. So as long as they're wet, you can kind of play around and get them to sit as you want. Now, if you do want to put a handle, let me just, you can do the handle. Um, if you wanted a handle, like, you know, he had a little handle on this one. It's just adorable. Um, let me just show you on this one. Let's see if I, think I have a long enough piece here. So. Anywhere, I'm just going to use my awl and I'm going to just go down and make a, a space right along one of my spokes. <coughs> and I'm going to just stick this baby in there just because I had it sitting here, maybe. Come on. There we go. Should have got that wet a little bit. All right. All right. So I've got it. Go further. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to go there. So you want it down there. You're going to bring it and say, all right, how, you know, how big a handle do you want? You want to go to the opposite <laughs> spoke. Let's see. Where's the opposite spoke? Right there. Opposite spoke. So figure out how big a handle you want. I'm going to go. I'm going to. Stay there, and then I'm gonna go right down. There we go. Um, gonna go down this side. There we go. And I got one. Just bringing it down all the way down that spoke. One more. Need my. Everything. Uh, that over. Oh. Wanted to pull that down a little, just one more. I'm just trying to grab that, pull it down. Just come on. Okay. All right. Push it down there. My weaver's almost too wet. It's uh, 
soft. There we go. All right. So. It's falling apart. Push it down that there. Ah, oh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna say I want it about there. This is another ish part, right? I'm gonna loop it over one of the weavers here. And then I'm gonna stick it back. Make that hole again. 